Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Chairman Schuster for holding today's hearing and allowing all of the stakeholders to express their views on the upcoming bill to reauthorize the nation's surface transportation program. I believe wholeheartedly that authorizing a six-year surface transportation bill with the appropriate funding levels and policy will give the economy just the kind of kickstart it needs. We are experiencing a renaissance in passenger rail in this country, and if we want to keep up with our international competitors, we need to make a significant investment in passenger and high-speed rail. I've advocated for the support of a dedicated source of funding for rail that would encourage the committee to include a minimum of $53 billion for high-speed and intercity passenger rail over the life of the bill, and $53 billion is what the administration had requested. Compared to the funding levels in the overall bill and the money being spent in other countries on rail, $53 billion is a drop in the bucket. Although we have some very small-minded governors. Support for high-speed rail is still very high in this country. The FRA received more than 90 applications from 24 states, the District of Columbia, and Amtrak for the $2.4 billion that Florida turned back. The request was for nearly $10 billion. I also believe that this reauthorization offers us an opportunity to improve the Railroad Rehabilitation and Improvement Finance, RIF loan program. RIF can help railroads, shippers, and state meet their rail infrastructure investment needs, but I don't think we are taking full advantage of the program. I met with several railroads and others, and they tell me time and time again how difficult the application process is to navigate, how time-consuming, how expensive, how they can't use studies from one DOT agencies to the other. I really do believe this is an area that we can work together to do better. The Draft Surface Transportation Authorized Act of 2009 made significant changes in the RIF program, which I propose the bill authorizes the Secretary to reduce the interest to be paid on direct loan providing the railroads, state and local government, and eligibility for the sole purpose of, of installing positive train control, allowing applicants to use private insurance including bond insurance in lieu of credit risk premiums, allowed applicants to pay the credit risk premium over the life of the loan. The draft bill also authorized appropriations to the secretary in reducing the interest rate for loans using uh, installing PTC. I hope that these provisions will be included in the new bill. I want to take this time to also express my strong support for Amtrak. Congress have micromanage and financially starve them for most of their existence. We created Amtrak because the freight rail couldn't make a profit on passenger service, yet we continue to hammer Amtrak for, making, for not making enough money. The Bush administration even went so far as to propose zero funding for Amtrak, trying to bankrupt it. I know that Chairman Michael wants to revisit some issues in the Amtrak bill that was signed into law on 2008. I hope that whatever he proposed, that we can work together and that we do it during negotiations like we did during the 2008 negotiation of the bill. Our subcommittee is also making major strides in improving safety in the railroad industry. We improve hour of service and training standards improving the working and living conditions of railroad employees and implementing several critical NTSB standards, including positive train control, which we can save both lives and money. All of the stakeholders working very hard together to implement these rules and make adjustments where we need it. Uh, we need to do this working together. Another issue that is critically important to the Gulf states and, and really the entire nation is restorement of the Sunset Limited route. This route served my home state of Florida and other states along the Gulf Coast, but sadly it's been shut down since Hurricane Katrina. The people of the state have been 
denied the ability to travel by rail, and most important, they have lost the ability to move from harm's way during a disaster. If Amtrak is unwilling to operate the line, then we may very well be a good place for a private company to provide service on this route. Hmm. Lastly, I want to encourage the committee to include language that ensures that minorities, veterans, and women-owned businesses are getting their fair share of the transportation pie. Federal transportation spending have historically served as a critical means to empower social disadvantaged business. Thanks to the effort of the Congressional Black Caucus and a bipartisan group of members of the House Transportation Committee, including former Chairman Bud Schuster, every major transportation bill since 1983 has mandated minimum levels of participation for minorities or women-owned companies. Unfortunately, because the Federal Railroad Administration have not historically been a significant grant-making agency, it is not currently authorized to require opportunities for disadvantaged business. I strongly encourage the, com the committee to take steps necessary to provide the FRA with the authority and to develop other programs such as small business set-aside, subcontracting, setting goals, and other avenues that ensure that minorities and disadvantaged businesses have their fair share of federal funding contracts. During the field hearing process, we heard from witnesses who want to limit the scope of the bill to just bill roles. That would be a mistake. We need a comprehensive bill that improves our transportation system for everyone who uses it, whether they're driving, walking, or taking public transportation, uh, public transit. Uh, my transportation person is here, Mr. Mike Blaylock, who runs my transit system and my road system. Way, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. The stimulus bill have proven that transportation infrastructure funding provide a benefits to the community and put people back to work. From every billion dollars in infrastructure funding, 32,000 good permanent paid jobs are created. And that is exactly what this country needs. With that, I want to welcome our panelists, and I'm looking forward to the hearing. I yield back the balance of my time.